Uh, of course, they've got one in Starkville and Tupelo, too. Bulldog Burger Spring Rolls. All kinds of options with burgers, toppings, so on. And you can sit outside and enjoy the game and the better weather that we're getting here as far as, uh, you know, the temps. It's cooling down a little bit, but we need it a little bit cooler. But I'm excited about this weekend and the games that we have and um, the lineup of SEC. Um, Dave Bar 2 at... Day bar two at CFB Matrix on the Modelo guest line. Blake threw out some of bar two's and McClintock's numbers from the weekend. Or I'm sorry, from the first six weeks or whatever it is of the season. And they're doing this uh, relative offensive scoring efficiency and defensive scoring efficiency, and they're waiting who you actually play. Um, I mean, it's interesting that Ole Miss is 29th as far as relative offensive scoring efficiency. And the Razorbacks are 34th on defense. That's almost a push. And so, uh, bar two, as we size up this game, Arkansas at Ole Miss, uh, what do you see here, wild man? Well, I see now, Adam Adam does that whole adjusted for, for team strength that they're playing and everything. And I was like, you know, and, and normally I just like, oh, dude, you know, Good teams end up playing just a bunch of bad ones, anyways. It's it's pretty rare that a, that a good team has a a really tough schedule. Um, but when you start looking at this this football game, um, you know Arkansas. You know you you started with the, the the Ole Miss offense versus the Arkansas defense, which is is the fun matchup here. You know I I always try to look to where the weaknesses are in a football game because that's probably where it's going to be decided but old miss um you know i have them 14th overall in scoring efficiency on offense and i have them 69th on defense so um arkansas though on defense i got them at 24th just straight up not not adjusted for playing georgia or anything like that um so you have an edge to old miss in that matchup but then you you flip over and arkansas's offense again played georgia they're at 81, and you got an Ole Miss at 69. So when you just look at those numbers, and for, for folks listening too, this is my go-to number during the season. If somebody just says, hey, can you take a look at game you know, X, and it's team one versus team two, I just look at offensive defensive scoring efficiency. The, you know, Once you get past the midpoint, the team that's better at that is going to win most of the football games, period. They're so just a better football team. You know, it, it, and and I know that that's really a hard way of simplifying it, but um, it's always the lowest common denominator I go to is how efficient are you uh, at scoring the ball and, and not allowing the ball to be scored, you know. So when you look at this football game, obviously the strength is, is Matt Corral and Lane Kiffin going up against uh, Odom and his defense, and, and the weakness is going to be the – you know, it's going to be Durkin and his rush defense uh, going up against um, Bryles uh, in his offense. And, and I, I think from a Ole Miss standpoint, um, that's the big weakness. It's that rush defense. Um, they're 111th in the country in expected points per rush given up. They're 122nd in rushing explosiveness given up. Now, the flip side, Arkansas is eighth in expected points per rush. That's their strength. So you, you have on the, on the offense and defensive side, on the flip side of it, Arkansas's strength is exactly Ole Miss's weakness in the football game when you're talking offense versus defense. And that's why I know a lot of people are like, why is this line open? I think it opened at three in favor of Ole Miss, which says neutral field means it's basically a pick 'em. That's why these teams balance each other so well in their strengths and in their weaknesses. Ole Miss has struggled with Arkansas the last really 10 years. Um, kind of weird. Even some of Freeze's better teams didn't win, uh, didn't beat Arkansas. Last year was a wild one where Corral had a bunch of turnovers but still had a chance to win. What does that say when you have six turnovers and you still have a chance to win with a minute left in the game? 
talking about a something did somebody did a bad job somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Or you're just lucky. You know, I mean, those those things happen, right? You get that anomaly where it's it's now in college you're going to get it more. You turn the ball over five times in NFL, you're toast. Right? I mean, how many, how many times do we see a team and you go, well, let's look at the total yards. Wow, 47 to 126. And the 126 won 42 to 3. What? <laughs> you know, the margin for error in the NFL is 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 nothing, it seems like. Uh, whereas in college football, especially when you have a high-powered offense like they do with Corral and these wide receivers, um, they can they can make up turnover deficits like that. So you're, the big matchup you're looking at is Browls versus Durkin. In this in this matchup, Bart right? Two. Right. Yeah. Well, you know me, man. I'm always looking outside the box, right? Every, everybody's excited to watch Matt Corral. And how many points can Ole Miss pile up? And that's cool. You know, that's the fun part of it. But I like looking to the weakness of it. Where where is if this is a close game and we look back on it, where could we have gone? Oh man, what happened here? And, and I think if it's close, I think if Arkansas is going to pull the upset. It's got to be running the football, okay? And, and obviously for two reasons. One, that's the Ole Miss weakness on defense, okay? Number two, if you're running the football, you're also running what? You're running the clock. And if your offense is on the field, guess who ain't on the field? Matt Corral. Right. So those are all good things. So to me, in this football game, if you're going to watch this game, I, I think the hidden the, the story in the numbers – Right. I, I, you know, for, for Arkansas to win this football game, to me, it is pound the rock because they're very, very good at it year to date. Uh, even after playing Georgia, they're still very, very good at it. Um, and that has been Durkin's Achilles heel so far is they are not good at stopping the run. Okay. Dave Bartu at CFB matrix on the out of bounds show. Um, so the the line's five and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, and it and it and it opened at minus six. I'll I'll, I'll talk. I'll hit this one here real quick too. Uh, I know you've probably been following. This year, I rolled out a new way of betting numbers and betting trends, and it focuses on the open and the close and, and the direction it's moving. So you say you you say it right now. It's at five and a half. I tell people, where did it start, okay? Did it start at five or six? Because it makes a huge difference. Now, when looking at this football game, I have it open at minus six for Ole Miss. It's moved down to minus five and a half. Now, in, in the three weeks, in the last 12 years, in the three weeks surrounding week six, which we're in right now, so week five, six, and seven, this move has been covered by the road team 64% of the time. So to me, if you're going to bet money on this game, I bet the move. And the move is in favor of Arkansas in this situation off of minus six down to five and a half. So I'll take Arkansas, tiny bet, Arkansas plus five and a half on the road. There's nothing in the total because the total opened at 65 and a half, big number moved up to 66 and a half. There's nothing in the trends uh, just slightly, 57% uh, of the time it goes over, but not good enough to bet. Uh, same thing with the with the line. But when you're looking at lines, folks, look at the direction they're moving um, because that's actually really important uh, in, in betting football games, at least so far. You know, right now I'm 99 and 55 on the year predicting these moves, so it's been really good uh, year to date. 99 and 55. Show me the money. Uh, brought to you by the Golden Moon Casino Sportsbook. Dave Bar two on the Modelo guest line. Uh, you talked about Browles and Durkin, but but I'm still intrigued with Kiffin versus Kiffin slash Levy versus Barry Odom too this weekend. Bar two. Yeah, well, uh, we we go back we go back to the numbers there, and everything's good. You know, I'm I'm looking at my advanced metric chart right now, and and anybody listening, you can go onto my Patreon site. Every week, I post this free for everybody: athletic directors, players, coaches, you name it. it. Don't matter. You can download this and just select your team, and you can look at Ole Miss, Arkansas side by side, just like I'm looking at right now. And this is just a phenomenal matchup. It really is. Uh, Arkansas, even after playing Georgia. Arkansas's defensive numbers are still uh, still stellar, still top 20 
Um, I think I, like I said, I had him 24th in total scoring efficiency, but you look at some of these advanced metrics, um, you know, probably the biggest ones, a couple of them that jump out, Ole Miss, uh, second level yards. So getting into the, getting into space, uh, and, and creating explosiveness, Ole Miss is fourth in the country at it. Guess who's ninth in the country at limiting that? Arkansas. I mean, it's just, they just butt hit points per opportunity. Arkansas number tw- or number 23 on defense, Ole Miss 12th on offense. You, you just go down the list, and it is just uh, defensive explosiveness is 20th. Uh, Ole Miss total explosiveness is number one in the country. <laughs> it's just, it, it is, to me, the offensive-defensive matchup you're talking about with, with Kiffin and Odom, that's the explosive part of it, right? That's the fireworks. That is the Titans. That is the part of the game that, that everybody is going to focus on because that's the strength. It really is. And the edge is to Ole Miss. They put up much better numbers um, year-to-date on the offensive side of the football uh, Arkansas is still very, very good, and, and obviously that's why we're talking about it because those are the strengths of the teams right now. Uh, but you look at most of the numbers, everything kind of edges towards um, towards Ole Miss. But I, what I would say is when you think Ole Miss, you think passing game, right? Mm-hmm. And, and so you look at the Arkansas defense, overall their defense on all downs is mid-20s. It's solid. But – it's the, the, their their rushing defense is their weakness. Their pass defense has been very very good. So, and believe it or not, when you look at Ole Miss, they're very good at passing. Their rush game is awesome. Their rush game is completely underrated. So, when I'm looking at these numbers, I think this whole game, both sides of the football, is going to come down to rushing. It's not going to be the passing game, you know. And I know we love talking about Matt Corral and what him and Kiffin can do. But I think the rushing game for one side or the other, that is going to be the difference in the football game, at least by the numbers year to date, strength versus weaknesses. To me, the biggest weakness of Arkansas on defense is defending the run. And I think people are going to get caught up in watching Matt Corral. And if they're watching him too much, Ole Miss will run all over him. How about that? So you're picking Ole Miss to win. They're the better recruiter. They have the best quarterback on the field, and it's at home. And they're at home, and they have the best overall unit, which is the offense. Sure. Right? Um, you know, so so I like that side of it. The line, like I said, open minus six. Ole Miss moved down to minus five and a half. So on the betting side of it, I would lean Arkansas to cover, uh, and I would slightly lean over the 65 and a half that the total's on right now. Dave Bartu showed me the money on the Out of Bounds show. His Patreon account is loaded up with goodies for those of you that like to wager a little bit um, on the weekend. And what I love about Dave's stuff, too, is he gets heavy into the over-unders, which I think is so cool. I mean, the point spread's great. Dave's made a mint on on over-unders over, over the years. He's done very, very well. This over-under is 60... Six and a half. Sixty-six and a half, right? Opened at sixty-five, moved up to sixty-six and a half. And in my numbers, there's nothing here to bet. Okay, okay? gotcha. Um, you you look at the trend history of this uh, of opening at sixty-five, which is a, which is a pretty high number. It's rare. There's nothing in the numbers that says if it moved down to sixty-four or up to sixty-seven. There's nothing in the numbers that say this is a bet. Now. If you want to shift gears, we can go into a couple of totals that are bets real quick. Yeah, give me one because I've got to do a pretty good hit on – people want to know about LSU at Kentucky this weekend, Bartu, just because cool. there's we'll, a we'll, lot we'll, of we'll stuff into, going we'll on with those run and, and the right. hot seat. We'll, we'll get into that, Okay, and, but I'll, I'll, I'll hit you with one total right now. Okay, okay? go. Uh, it, it opened at 51-and-a-half. It's down to 46-and-a-half. Uh, the number you're looking for to close is 48. If Georgia Auburn closes at 48 or less, you want the under. That number in the three week window in the last 12 years is 17 and four to the under. So you could bet right now, which is at 46 and a half, and you are still in really good odds on the underside, but. Watch that move. See if you can pick yourself up a 47, 47 and a half, 48 under at the close before kickoff on Saturday. 
Wow. Okay. Georgia at Auburn. Real quick, what are the numbers? Can Auburn hang hang around in this game? What What do the numbers tell you? I'm sure they can. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure they can. You know, the the spread it opened at, at 15 in favor of Georgia. It moved up uh, to 15 and a half. The road team, and then obviously that's a rare number. Road team is two and one to win and cover in the last 12 years off of that small move. So mm. I would face, I, I would lean Georgia to win and cover in the football game. But because of the line movement by the line makers and the line breakers, I'm also favoring under 48. So, you know, you do the math on, on covering 15 and a half and a score under 48. Um, wow. might be kind of a yawner. Yeah. Okay. All right. LSU travels to Kentucky, Kentucky coming off a big win, LSU coming off a heartbreaking loss where it looks like they, their coaching staff made some miscues late in the game. So now LSU mm -hmm. travels to Kentucky. What jumps out at you in that matchup and in that game or two? Uh, I, think, I think the biggest thing that jumps out is what jumped out last week. When I was, I was tweeting about the, the Florida-Kentucky game, um, is telling people don't get too far ahead of yourself because Kentucky has the best unit on the field in this game, which was their defense. Um, and that's the case this week. Uh, Kentucky's scoring efficiency on offense, 61st. Defense is 11th. All right? Uh, LSU is a lot more balanced. I, I know everybody's jumping all over Ed and LSU, uh, but the, the offense is 47th, the defense is 38th. And, and this is exactly the profile that Kentucky went up against last week. LSU and Florida, by the numbers, are basically the same team. You know, mid-30s, mid-40s on offense and defense, nothing great. Kentucky's bad on offense, but their defense is stellar. And, and so I, I think that's, I mean, the, the defense is carrying Kentucky here. So you look at the numbers, you have to be saying, okay, the LSU has the talent, but the best unit on the field, who is playing the best right now, uh, that's Kentucky. Uh, Kentucky opened it as a one-point favorite at home. It's moved up to three points. Um, now, that, that, that movement, there's really nothing to bet there. So we're not betting on that one. Uh, it did open, though, same as Georgia-Auburn, 51 and a half, and it moved down to 50. So if I'm, bet, if I'm looking to bet this game, I'm betting the under on this game as well, LSU-Kentucky uh, under 50. But by the numbers – it, it, this should be the kind of a blueprint of, of last week. I expect the game to be extremely close, um, but you have to lean towards the team that's playing the, you know, that has the best unit on the field right now, which is the Kentucky defense. Wow. Can you imagine, Bartu, if Stoops goes back to back weeks, um, beats Florida, who's around a number 10 recruiter, and LSU's in the top five? Yeah, exactly. I mean, if Stoops right now, I mean, this is, he's, he's in the middle of his, greatest year at Kentucky. I mean, un unquestionably, nothing's even been close to it. I know he's been a popular name to talk about in the last few years, but he's never done anything special on the field. I mean, he's been a plus one coach effect guy here and there. Usually he's average to his talent. Uh, he's increased the, the, the talent profile at Kentucky. I mean, this is the most talented Kentucky team they've ever had. Actually, it's been that way for the last couple of years. So, you know, he's certainly put it together. They've certain they've absolutely found something on defense that works. Uh, you know, his 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 downside right now is he can't, he just can't figure out how to hell to hire an offensive coordinator <laughs> because their offense just ain't ever good. It's just not. It's just he can't get even get into the top fifty. If he could figure out how to hire a good offensive coordinator, damn, he'd be really really dangerous. But because he's only really good on one side of the football, uh, it, it's limited. Uh, but it's still a team that is really tough to beat because of that defense. Do you expect Alabama to cover the 18 over A&M? Um, yes, I I do. Um, let's see here. Where is that game? I was just prof I profiled it's all at these this morning. Okay. Yeah, it's at A&M. So, um, so slight lean on the, the – so the, it opened at 53 on the total, dropped to 51. So the trends have a slight 60% lean on the under – uh, on the 51, uh, in terms of the spread, it opened at 14 and a half, moved up to 17 and a half. Now, this is something that I've learned this year, okay? And everybody wants to, you gotta, everybody listen to this, okay? Is, you know how, Bo, when, when a line moves, 
almost always you hear on Twitter or an announcer going, oh, it went from 14.5 to 17.5, so you need to bet against the move, right? Everybody's on one side, so you've got to bet against on the other. And that's kind of true on the initial move, okay? Let's say it went from 14.5 to 15.5. But I am finding there's usually a line in the sand on moves that when they become so big, they're strong, right? You're, you're, you bet, you're, you're betting against strength. So in this case, here's where it gets interesting. It opened at 14 and a half. If it moved to 15 and a half or less, you would take the points because the line maker said 14 and a half. The line breakers only moved it to 15 and a half. It's not a strong move. But once 17 was hit, in the last 12 years, Opening at 14, minus 14 and a half on the road, moving above 17, wins and covers 83% of the time. Dang. Because the move is so strong, okay? And, that, and, and, and in my system, that's what I'm trying to take advantage of. You have your line makers, your super smart people making the line. Then you have your line breakers, the people moving the line, trying to beat it. And then what I'm trying to do is at the last minute on Friday – it, when the lines are closing, now we're the line takers. We're taking both parties, the people making it, the people breaking it, and working with that line. So in this one, conventional wisdom would say, oh, it's gone from 14.5 to 17.5. You've got to bet against that. But the move is actually so strong. So many people are on Alabama that the move is actually beyond betting against it. So by my numbers, I'm taking Alabama – to win and cover in this football game. I got 10 seconds. Oklahoma and Texas on a neutral field this weekend. <laughs> uh, take take the best unit. Uh, take, take take the Oklahoma offense. I take the over on this thing, though. You know, not looking at any numbers, just gut feeling. Take the over just because of both offenses are good and both defenses are not so good, especially Texas. I hate to stroke your ego, but you're the best. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I love you, man. Anytime. See you, dude. Dave Bartu, check out the Patreon account. He's throwing up all kinds of goodies left and right on the Patreon account. Dave Bartu, you can also follow him on Twitter at CFB Matrix. Thanks for listening to the Attic Bound Show. Brought to you by Eye Care Professionals and Dr. Kirk Jeffries and the team on Lakeland Drive. If you missed anything, hit Apple Podcast and search the Out of Bounds Show. We'll see you tomorrow.